I squeal in the night because it's like someone's sticking a probe in my leg. Oh. It's absolutely bizarre, and I've had it for months. So you must be very pleased you're pregnant and also no, I'm quite worried. Terrified. Very terrified. Absolutely terrified. Sort of getting the sort of bit down and sort of suicidal thoughts and things. How are you managing with the suicidal thoughts? What thoughts are going through your head? You no, know, just thoughts about ending it all and how I do it. I know it's a nuisance when you're there, but it's just delayed things for you anyway, hasn't it? The thing is, I'm absolutely furious. Oh, wait. That was even bigger. Seriously? Mm, have a look. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my God. Come on in. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And you? Good, fine. I've got Hello. Dr. Dylan with me, who's just started Hello. with us. Hi. So she's just uh, watching at the moment. Right. How are things? Fine. Well, it's really daft, but I got a bee sting Ooh. on Saturday. And it didn't hurt, really, at the time. But yesterday and today, it's swollen up and it's so sore. So I just went to the pharmacy yeah. just to see what can I put on. I've been putting Antisan on it. OK. Um, and I've taken Pyritin, but it's yeah. just so sore and itchy. But he said, oh, I think it might be infected because it's a bit hot and throbbing. So he said, I'll just see. So this happened on Saturday? <coughs> Saturday. Yeah. OK. And I just, I'm just going to squeeze your yeah, nails, so it's going to be a bit sore for you. I'm not actually convinced that it's infected. Oh, good. It's really difficult with fingers because if you'd kind of got bitten here, it would just swell and yeah. it'd be able to swell a lot. Mm. Whereas with fingers, for some reason, they can only just swell a tiny bit. Right. And if they get to a point and they just get too tight and it gets really sore and throbbing, which is what you Yeah, this feeling. is what it's like, yeah, but I'm sure that's fine then, do you think? It is fine. So antihistamines are the right thing to do. Okay. The other thing that would be really good is if you can elevate it. So tie your arm up so it's around your shoulder. That right. would just help gravity to kind of get rid of some of the swelling and hopefully it would get better. But I don't think it's infected. Pain, They're pain, aren't they? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I have been stung before, but I, I can't really remember it. But yeah. honestly, I, even at night, I've been waking up because I've been going on it and it's, it's so sore. hot yeah. and sore. Right. That's all. Don't need to do anything. Lovely. No, OK. Keep doing Thank what you're you. doing. Yeah. Lovely. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye. Oh, and then guess what? When I went home yesterday, I'm like, what's that moving? Them proper ones with a big, long leg spider, thin, thin one, yeah. yeah. Literally, it was right where I had walked into, so I was like, oh, my God, I just touched that. Nastiness. Nastiness. <laughs> Hello, come through. Please have a seat. I'm so sorry to have kept you waiting so long. I apologise for that. How are you? I'm all right. Great. -ish. I don't know if you remember, I had a spine fusion fracture. operation. Yes, yes, to sort of fuse the fracture. I don't know whether this is related at all, but since that operation, I've had these weird... They're very difficult to describe, these weird pains all down through my legs. Mm. Francis had originally come to the surgery... Um, a number of months after she'd fallen over in the snow. Uh, she had significant back pain and an X-ray actually showed a broken bone in her back. She went on to have an operation to stop the pieces of bone from moving around as it was thought that that was what was causing her back pain. The minute I lay down to go to sleep, turn on my side, and then it's like electric shocks just whizzing up and down my legs, all around my knees, hips, ankles. It's really distracting and sometimes I, I squeal in the night because it's like someone's sticking a probe in my leg. Oh. It's absolutely bizarre, and I've had it for months. 
Had you ever had it before the operation? No. When did this start? Well, it's hard to describe because it's kind of crept up. Mm. And just sitting, like, waiting for you then, you know, I had sitting like that mm. and, like, get pains down here and mm. it's weird. But going to bed, I just... I, I sort of lie there and it's like, OK, it's starting. I can feel it starting. And then, and then they whizzing around bizarre electric shock type pains. Electric shocks. That's sort of what it feels like. They kind of creep up on you and then they go, kind of, they whiz. Hmm. Do you have pain in your back now? No, the, the bone pain went immediately as soon mm. as they fused the, the bones. The, the muscles have taken ages to heal. So these pains, in is it mostly in your right leg or your left leg or both? Mostly my right leg. I might ask you to pop your trousers off if that's OK. Jump on the couch and then there's some more blue roll that you can just pop on your lap if that's OK. okay. Yeah. And if you give me a shout when you're ready and I'll come through. Um... Okay. Great. So I'm just going to check all the nerves in your legs if that's OK. What I'd like you to do now is push up off the bed with that leg and now that side and pull down and the other side and bend your knees up for me and push me away with that leg, push me away, pull me towards you. I'm just going to lift your leg up and rest it on my arm. I want you to go completely relaxed and floppy. <laughs> Sorry. Good. Feel free to pop your things on, come and have a seat. Right. It's weird, isn't it? It is. I'm not completely sure what the problem is. What I'd like to do is do some blood tests to check some of your vitamins and sugar control and stuff like that, and then see you with the results, and we'll make a plan about what to do. Does okay. that sound OK? Yeah. But you don't think it's from what they've done on my back? That's what I was more concerned with, that it was... No, I don't. No. Okay. Because the nerves which supply your legs come out much lower down. Yeah, OK. OK? Right, thanks. No problem. Much. See you again. They're making tunes for us. <laughs> <laughs> My neck hurts. <laughs> what are we up to? Uh, apart from being very, very angry. Mm -hmm. Now, I went to St George's. Mm -hmm. I got there at 2 o'clock. Mm -hmm. She looked in both ears, clogged up with wax. Right. So, she said, you have to see the doctor in order to get syringed. Right. 3.25, mm -hmm. I was rather miffed, because I was still sitting there. Mm -hmm. So I guess what's happened is you left without your hearing test. I am and you came saying, the yeah. other day to get your ears syringed and there was a problem there. And so your ears are still filled with wax and I'm going to need to refer you again to get them sorted out. Is that right? Is that where we're going with this story? More or less, yeah. yes. OK, but fine. The thing is, I'm absolutely furious. <laughs> I've been a bit worried about my hearing in the last couple of years or so. Yeah? I don't catch things that people say and everybody else does. Apparently, I keep telling me to get my ears checked because she thinks we're going deaf. She also talks to me when she's not in the same room and yes. expects me to hear her. The one on the left, it sounds like roadworks at night. Oh, really? <laughs> as I'm talking now, it feels as if I'm hearing out of this ear, mm -hmm. this ear, but not, not this ear. Mm -hmm. It fits very well. There's a little bit of gunk coming out of his right ear. Let's have a look at the ears now. So what were you coming to tell me today, just about this story? Was there anything new? Well, actually, I'm just coming here, hopefully with clean ears, mm -hmm. in order to make another referral, because I came to the conclusion that referral you done the last time. So I've done several referrals for this. I really understand with Ian why he was so frustrated at being kept waiting at his hospital appointment. The problem is it's all the clinics and services are really overused and oversubscribed. And so inevitably there are delays in treatment. Sometimes I think people forget that 
people will get the care that they need, but often it may not be as smooth as they'd hope. But at the same time, I'm not impressed by these olive oil drips because every time I put the cotton wool in and take it out just before going to bed, it's just like, it's just the staining of the oil of oil. So the reason we get you to use the drops is hopefully it will encourage it to come out, but if not, it softens it, so it will make it a lot less painful for you to have that wax removed. So I know it's a bit of a nuisance having it done, but similarly, it needs to be done for us to get the hit wax out. Yeah, I understand that. What I was thinking, though, is like going back to an old and tested method which worked, was getting the olive oil, mm -hmm. not the drops, heat it, and then pour it in, and then put in the cotton wool, mm -hmm. because the heat from the olive oil going in is going to melt it a lot quicker mm -hmm. than cold olive oil. But it will also damage the skin in the ear. So I wouldn't heat up oil and put it in your ear. I think no. that would be a disaster. <laughs> I'm, not say, I'm not saying it's going to be boiling. It's no, just... It you'd just, warm it, but... Just warm it. Yeah, yeah. I, I probably wouldn't do that, Ian. If it were my ears, I definitely wouldn't. Had you just sat there a bit, bit longer at the clinic, you probably would have wax-free ears now. I know it's a nuisance when you're there, but it's just delayed things for you anyway. I've got other things to do rather than sit around waiting. I do get that, Ian, but at the same time, You've, you're going to not have your hearing so well for the next couple of months while we get this sorted. Unusual, then, isn't it? Okay, right, all done. Is it? Yeah. Right. I will sort that out. Okay. Bye. Bye. There's nothing especially wrong, but there is something that's concerning me, and I don't know whether it's something or whether it's nothing or what, but just to give you a bit of. Um, background, my best friend was diagnosed with ovarian cancer two months ago. Okay. And I don't know whether it's just because it's very close to home and I'm seeing her and speaking to her every day that it's just, it's making me concerned about ovarian cancer, other types of cancer, just all sorts really. I appreciate that this is probably so stupid but when I push in my ribs here I feel like I can, I'm pushing something back. Whether it feels like, I don't know if it feels like a gland or I don't think it's a lump, and I feel like it's always been there. Like, I could have, it could have been there 10 years ago, but it never would have worried me, never thought anything of it. But now, because my mind is just, like, sure. in overdrive, it's kind of was nothing, and now it's something, and I just... I almost just need to come and speak to someone and just so I can... Sounds like you did need to yeah. come. So, let's fill your tummy and see what there is. So, sorry, hands are cold. So, actually, show me where you so felt I... at the top. Here, yeah. So if I, I mean, actually, if I'm lying down now, I actually can't feel anything. But do you know, what? I just find myself there all day going feeling it. And now, and, and then I think because I think that's you know, I feel like I can feel something constantly. And, and I know sure. the minute I'm not thinking about it. Okay, let's start with this and see. Okay, tell me if you get any pain at all. Okay. So, when I did that, not painful anywhere? No, no, no. OK, let's get you to stand up. OK, and then show me where... Feel it, if you can. If you put your hand there... Yeah. I feel like I can feel something. OK, yeah, I can feel that. What you can feel. And then, and then you think it's the same then... on this side, or something on this side. So, the same place? Yeah. yeah. OK. That feels like muscle, actually. That's, that's, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Um, that actually is one of the big muscle groups in your abdomen right. that we're feeling. OK. Um, as you felt elsewhere, you've got obviously the main big muscle groups, which are in the middle. Yeah. And there you can, you can clearly feel those. Yeah. You do. But I think that's what we're feeling in this case. Right. In terms of organs, Yeah. you have the liver here, and yeah. I can feel that. Yeah. The spleen's kind of at the back, right at the back here. Yeah. Then you've got your kind of kidneys there. You yeah. can't feel those there further at the back. Yeah. Your womb would be about here. OK. Um, bladder and womb kind of all level, and your ovaries will be somewhere like here. Mm -hmm. So it's miles away from yeah. um, where we're feeling. Yeah. In terms of what you've felt, I'm definitely not at all worried. Right. <laughs> OK. OK. That, that's, yeah. You know, as I said, yes, my, so my friend didn't have anything like that at all, and it's, she's the same age as me, and it's completely come out of the blue, yes. and it just makes you question everything, I think. Yes. 
Um, but yeah, I How just. How did she find out then? What happened? So she said in the morning she'd lie down, she'd press her. Oh, and she felt something. And she felt a lump. Um, yeah. And so she was just like, I really should just go and check this out and just put her mind at rest. And then fast forward two months, she's had um, a full hysterectomy, cervix, ovaries, everything. everything out. Luckily, she's already had her kids. Um, but now she's just recovering from that operation. She kept saying, you know, like, um, as long as, you know, if anything comes out of this, if you're worried about anything, you just go and get it checked out. And which is why we came, really, just to sort of... Yeah. I'm sure I'm probably being stupid, but... <laughs> no, but you <laughs> said, to it's tell worth me. checking out. It's yeah. worth checking out. And something you don't know what it is, it's worth checking out. Yeah. So in this case, it's fine. Great. But if you do find anything and else, do come back. Wonderful. OK. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. It's like musical rooms out here, boy. They've all just shuffled around, so they're in different rooms, but we're, we're aware of where they are and stuff, so it's fine. Come in. Hello. You all right? Oh, no, the room. I get moved around a lot. Yes. It's very unpredictable. So... In terms of your blood results, we've been trying to decide whether or not you needed to go and see somebody about this tummy pain. Yeah. Over a number of appointments, Leslie and I had discussed his abdominal pain, his diet and his lifestyle. I buy some uh, what they call dot chicken nuggets. I eat, like, say, 30 of them in one go. That's quite a lot. The last set of blood results was completely normal. And I think, actually, you probably don't need to go and see somebody about your tummy pain unless it's bothering you. Unless the blood tests come back a bit. No, the blood tests oh. are normal. Because we've talked about your diet quite a bit yeah. and the fact that it can be very erratic. I think that you can get some tummy pain if you're not eating a regular and healthy diet. Yeah, that's right, yeah. And that's why I go to these nutrition classes. So I've been, been to a couple and, uh, you know, you learn a lot. Initially, you walk out of the building thinking, oh, yeah, I'll, but next time I get money, I'll go and buy some of this, some of that, some of this, some of that. Of course, when I get the money, it goes on what I normally buy. I think to myself, well, I should really buy a whole bunch of salad. Yeah. And, you know, just eat like a rabbit for a week or a couple of days. <laughs> you know, that's what you call it, rabbit food. Rabbit food. I didn't know you were going to nutrition classes. Yeah, uh, we, uh, well, we had one in the house. And, what, uh, what kind of house is it that you live in? It's like a hostel. I was offered a place two years ago and I ah, didn't take it. OK. Because of their rules. And yes. Their rules being you can't have a beer. No. And it's not so much that, you can't have a beer outside. So I'll give that the elbow. But this place here, they don't, even, they don't say you can drink, but if you do drink in the house, it's just drink in your room. Leslie and I have talked about his alcohol consumption. I'd really like to work with Leslie to try and help him to eat a healthy diet and to try and reduce his alcohol consumption. So let's conclude. Your tummy pain, you've had it for 20 years. Well, yeah. It's not too bad. We no. know your diet's very erratic yeah. and you've told me nothing like a <laughs> swallowing problem or bleeding or weight loss, uh, uh, which uh, makes me worry. Which, oh, yeah, OK. OK? Yeah. Lovely. Good to see you again. Yeah. So come and let me know if this tummy pain is worsening and then we can do a referral. Yeah, okay. All right? Yeah. 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 Bye. Where's the sandwich list? Egg and cress. No, I don't want egg and cress. I don't know, something like chicken, like not in New York. Tuna and spring onion. Tuna? And spring onion. You want to do tuna mm. and spring onion, isn't it? Never had that one before, but spring onion is quite nice. Hi, Mark. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Yeah, right. Bad, thanks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, I had my first CBT appointment for eight months. Eight months. I think uh, last week. Um, so just sort of tweaked a few things that I was doing. Okay. So, so I'm just going to try and go to, like, go to bed at 11 every night and um, like cut out all alcohol, which I've been doing okay. last week. Mark has suffered with anxiety and depression um, since about um, 
2012, 2013. He'd previously presented to his GP initially with just tiredness, but then um, he developed more depressive symptoms and was diagnosed with depression. Also, I've been keeping like a sleep diary and okay. activity diary. And, yeah. Um, like a food and exercise journal as well. And okay. just noting on it when I feel tired yeah. and what, how I feel, what my what thoughts are running through my head yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah. Feeling a little bit better, but sort of moods sort of up and down still, which okay. seems to be, I don't know, I thought I'd sort of, um, that had improved before, but it seems to still okay. be sort of getting the sort of bit down and sort of suicidal thoughts and things. How are you managing with the suicidal thoughts? What thoughts are going through your head? Yeah, just feeling quite down and a bit um, dejected, I suppose, and just, yeah, you know, just thoughts about ending it all and how I do it. And, but, you know, but I suppose they're quite occasional still. They're not that um, regular, but um, they're still quite sort of... It can last for an hour or two or something. I'm quite down and... Yes. Yeah. Not really want to do anything. <laughs> yeah, and that happens a couple of times a week. Or? Yeah, it's it's, yeah. it's not like a regular. It's mm. probably every other day, every other few, every few days, maybe okay. something like okay. that. And what do you kind of do you think about what you would do or yeah. what your options are? Yeah, that sometimes. Yeah. yeah. And what are, what have you thought your options are? Uh, just sort of running away or stabbing myself or something like that. Okay. Yeah. You know what I'm like. Yes. I will panic. You're worried. You don't and know. And I'm worried, and I'm panicked, and then I get depressed <laughs> because I don't know what's going on. Like if I'm asleep, I quite often wake myself up thinking that I'm kind of choking a little bit. You're not actually when you when no, you wake no, up, no, you're well, okay. It's fine, but... but it's kind of like a panicky kind yeah. of thing. I was going to um, say it sounds a bit like yeah. a panic attack. I think you put a bit of weight on since I last saw you, haven't you? Yeah, yeah you used to be a skinny chap. I did. <laughs> well, it's all to do with my inactivity. Oh and... dear. Depression. Oh dear, I'm sorry to hear that. I've had a lot of stress over the last couple of weeks because it's the end of our financial year and we've all been scrabbling to try and do our numbers. Yeah. I think you're unwell at the moment mm -hmm. and I do genuinely think that you will get better. Yeah, yeah. You know, I do have that hope. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. that you are ill and, you know, I think you are we are getting you on the right track and I think all credit to you because you put so much effort into yeah. <laughs> getting better. Yeah, thank you. As well, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I think that you will have a fulfilling life again. Yeah. Mark is definitely someone who is doing his utmost to help himself and when um, patients are really trying to help themselves, it does make our job much more easier and they tend to respond better as well. Unfortunately, part of the problem with depression is that you sometimes lack that motivation and that drive. Are you still seeing the psychiatrist? Yes, but I haven't seen him for about a month. OK, so there's that to do. I know we've got to sort I your need, medication. I, need some more. I just need some more. But I don't know if I need a higher dosage on surgery. You know, in terms of safety, in terms of those suicidal thoughts, like yeah. if, you ever, if they get more common or you're taking them that bit further, then please let me know, let anyone here know. Okay. Go to A&E, because that's part of the illness, OK? And yeah. we won't want you to do anything when yeah. you're not, you know, well. Yes, yes, sure. You know, that has such serious consequences. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Should we put a review on? Yeah. Let's do four weeks, because you'll have seen yeah. the psychiatrist by then, and yes. it'd be nice to know how the chronic fatigue referral is going through. Yes, sure. OK? Much. All right. <laughs> Thanks so much. See ya. Bye. Nothing for today, I'm afraid. Oh, actually, I've got a full 30. That'll be with Dr. Pierce. Yeah. What's your date of birth? What was the appointment for today? Uh, it's uh, itching. I'm, I'm getting these marks around this area. It's, it's more mainly upper body and around neck as well. OK, let's have a look at the rash a little bit more. So, yeah, if we just lift it, if we lift this up, see where the, where the main bit of rash is. OK. It's quite noticeable, isn't it? Do they come up as little pustules or 
No, it's the same, but it's it's very irritating, you know. Yeah. Okay. And uh, do you share a bed with anybody at home? No. Okay. How long have you had the rash for? This is, I think, uh, about four or five days, this uh, front side. And it's very itchy? Uh, yeah, but the back one, you know, uh, because I can't see it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so... The back's, the back's where it started off, though. Uh, but I think it's not much now, probably. Yeah, just not... Not, very, not a very specific one, but... Has been has been itchy on there. Yeah, it, but it's a long time. But the last few days, it's just mainly here. And uh, yesterday, I had a very bad towards the neck. It was like here. Just very itchy around there. And what do you do work-wise? Uh, I'm an accountant. I'm an accountant, so not exposed to anything no, doing no, no, accountancy. No. No. I wonder, just looking at the rash, whether or not it could be a type of rash called scabies, which is caused by a little mite that lives on the skin. It's the sort of thing that you can pick up. Um, so sort of sleeping in a hotel bed or anything like that, no, where somebody else... No, it's the same bed uh, I'm sleeping, and it's not being shared with anyone. Scabies is the name that's given to a condition where the skin is infested with a small mite that lives just under the skin surface. Some of the myths associated with scabies uh, may be that it's a disease that dirty people have, but in actual fact, it's something that we can pick up at any time. This will be something that they would have come into contact with a number of weeks before, maybe really anything up to six to eight weeks before the, the itching has started. And uh, the, yesterday I requested um, the antifungal cream for my, because it's, I feel smell down the bottom uh, between legs and armpit. Let's have a look at the armpits as well. Let's have a... Um... Because we might just try a tablet from a fungal point of view. Okay. And in there, so just very, it's very itchy around here. Yeah, it could be, it could be. It's not very classical of intertrigo. And a similar thing in the top of the groin. Yeah, here. It's not itchy, yeah. but it's a smell. The antifungal cream tends to improve that, does it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, because it's, after a long time of having it, because it's worked really good. Well, let's try a slightly different approach to it, and we'll go down the route of a medication, like a tablet form of the cream. The areas where this is happening, whether or not there is a fungal component to it, it's difficult to know. But we'll see what happens with this rash over the next two weeks. OK. Thank you very much. Take care. Take care. What we can do for you is we can either book the next appointment, which will be next week, or if you don't feel able to wait till then, I can get an on-call doctor to call you today. Are you available to take a call today? Come in. Right. Well, as it started Monday, I've got an abscess and a boil in my mouth. Can you see where it's swollen? I can, yeah. Right. Do you want me to open it up? Well, when did I it think, start? I think Sunday night, yeah, I don't think it was. I think it's there on my gum. Can you see it? Oh, uh, <gasps> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just wash my hands. Ah, uh, well, I just washed mine before I came out, but yours are probably cleaner. <laughs> but I can't figure out why it's affecting my cheek. So, what did you notice, first just, of all? Uh, uh, Monday I woke up and I went, oh, shot me that. Because I wear a little plate, and it's near where the plate is, but I don't think that's doing it. When did you notice the, the oh, swelling in the cheek? Oh, this morning. I didn't even... I got up and had a quick wash in that. I'm going to have a new bath tonight. But I washed what that. I was in a hurry. I went with that. Took those bits off, as you do. <laughs> Once a week, shaved tonight. Yeah. And uh, I and got somebody went, what's up with your face? I said, what do you mean? I said, well, there's a big swelling in the right hand side. Let's have a look then, sir. Can you put oh. your tongue on the top of your mouth like that? I can that? do that. Uh, 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 no, uh, just at the uh, front of your mouth, so uh, like that. Uh, uh, uh. OK, fine. And then just relax, OK? Uh, 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 uh. And does this, I'm just going to press on you. Uh, does that hurt? Uh, not in your cheek. Yeah. Uh, where is it? You can press about that where you think it is. I don't know. Tell you what, just can you lift that up? That's how's great. That? Oh, it's a nasty infection, isn't it? Oh, well, I don't know how I got it. Brush your teeth and all that. Can you do me a favour? Can you get both of your hands and lift both it? Right. Hold yeah. on. Hold on. But how's right. that? Yeah. That's great. Uh, 
OK, fine. When did you last go to the dentist? Oh, that was two months ago. I'd never have any trouble oh, with the she dentist. she went two months ago? Yeah, they put it in. I'm due for an eye checkup. Did you smoke? No, I stopped. I'm stopping. I've seen Mr Passwa at the moment since last September. How many years did you smoke for? A lot of years. Since I was 16 or 17 16, so 45-ish years. But I've been chewing a lot of gum, but that wouldn't do it, would it? No. What about alcohol? I've cut back down on that, I know. Have you ever drank in excess? Maybe years ago. That maybe stopped in the last couple of years, pal. OK. Sorry. OK. That's yeah. fine. That's OK. All right, maybe I've done something now. I, could, I, I think the done. most likely thing is an infection. I agree, it's a bit unusual. Off off and sometimes you go like that if you're sweating on site. And, you know. So what, I'm going to give you some antibiotics to treat the infection. Probably be a good idea to try and see your dentist as well. Right. OK. I'm going to give you some mouthwash. Right. As well. OK. To use, just to keep it all clean. So you're going to take some ibuprofen three yeah. times a day with food. Yeah. For that's for pain and swelling. If you're still in pain, you can take paracetamol on top of that. Go okay? behind you, Kate. <laughs> in a couple of weeks, if there's any problem at all Make with your gum, man. you need to come back. Yeah. Because in people who've been heavy smokers, especially if you've been drinking as mm -hmm. drinkers as well, we always need to make sure that everything heals up properly. Because right. if it's not, sometimes it can be a sign of something nasty like mouth cancer. OK? All yeah. right. Thanks very much for your help. All right. Doctor. Pleasure. Shan, I'm saying it wrong, isn't it? Shan. 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 Yeah. Right, Shan. All right. right. Thank you very much. Bye. Erin speaking, how can I help? Have you brought a urine sample in today? No, I didn't. One of the tests is a stool sample. OK. So you'll need to drop that off for us, if you don't mind. <laughs> Are you able to provide one quickly now? Mm, touch and go, I can try. Um, I've brought a sample, because I... I hope I'm pregnant. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, I don't know if you need that. I don't actually. Okay. Damn but it. I, no, it's, it's good to bring it. Um, we don't tend to repeat them here, but I'll, I'll okay. ask some questions. The tests that we do here are exactly the same as the ones you buy at the counter. So, when was your last period as the first question? Um, 29th of what June. June. Okay. And your periods are normally quite regular, are they? Um, well, they are, apart from, I don't know if you've seen, but I've had two mis miscarriages and one was recent, so I actually haven't had a period since, since the last one. So that period you're saying on the 29th of June was...? Yeah, the miscarriage. The miscarriage, OK. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear. I saw that. I didn't realise you'd had one before as well. Mm -hmm. um, when was the previous miscarriage you had? It was April. In April, OK. And were both of them early in the pregnancy? or The first one was about eight or nine weeks. OK. And then okay. the last one was like six and a half, seven weeks. So. OK, so you must be very pleased you're pregnant and also No, I'm absolutely worried. terrified. Are you terrified? Absolutely terrified. Miscarriage is quite common in early pregnancy, particularly in the first trimester, which is the first 12 weeks of pregnancy. Clearly, it's always very upsetting whenever a miscarriage does happen, and it's understandable at her reaction at being very worried about this new subsequent pregnancy. However, having one miscarriage does not significantly increase the risk of having a future miscarriage. Any little twins, I'm like, oh. And what happened last time? Did you have some bleeding or pain, or how did it come to um, So the first one, yeah, pain and cramps. Well, the first one started with sort of a little bit of brown discharge, and you know you convince yourself that that's okay because it could just be old blood, etc. And then, yeah. but I did sort of have period pains, and the second one was was earlier, and it was the same sort of thing. What hard year you've had? That's... Oh, I know. Yeah, not mm -hmm. good. Okay. I saw it this morning. I know you did. <laughs> well, what was my thoughts and how I feel? I don't feel good at all. Well, that's why I left the message this morning that I thought I had some more steroids, but I haven't. So that's what I need, I think. <laughs> it's been a job to be. Breathe through my mouth, not through my nose. It's been blocked up. Your nose has? Well, I keep blowing it, you know. But... OK. And how long have you been having difficulty breathing for oh, now? A couple of days. A couple of days? Yeah. OK. You seem more breathless than normal. Yeah, I am. Yeah. I can't do anything without sitting down. OK. All right if I sit 
It's the eldest. I can't do that. Can I just check your temperature? And check this side. I think I've got No. To. Have you been managing to look after yourself? Yes. Yeah? yeah? Can I pop your finger in there? And my foot is killing me. Have you got an appointment yet? I've had it. I phoned them up. Yeah. They gave me a boot. Well, that's a joke. Ah. I tried wearing it. And what that does, it takes you off the floor that much. Right. So your hips ache because you're walking ah. out all out of line. Ah. No good. It is very difficult, very mm. soul-destroying. I think, really. I think the hard thing is I don't think there are any other options, really, well, apart that's from painkillers and, yeah. and time. Your oxygen levels are quite low today. They, haven't, they thought... haven't been this low for a while. One option is to go into hospital. What could they do? <coughs> I can't breathe. I can't cope. Mm. I wake up three times a night and my partner is waking up. He's just getting worse and worse. I can't just breathe because he's constantly being blocked. I sort of feel wheezy, you know, sort of... I always need to sort of cough. It just feels almost like I'm sort of gasping for breath. It's, it feels like I'm just kind of restricted. Lips yeah. tight on the cardboard bit and then far the air out fast. OK. So it's a real... <sighs> I like your dress. Thank you. It's new. Oh, nice. Nice and bright. Nice. If you sit forwards for me. And just breathe in and out for me. I had a blood test this morning. OK. So, obviously, your breathing's not so good today. It's quite a lot worse than normal. Yes, I yeah. know. But what I can do. And your oxygen levels are quite a lot lower than normal as well. One option is to go into hospital. The other option, which is potentially more risky, is to try and look after you, you know, here and at home. Well, if I could have another go here at home. OK. The benefits of staying at home um, compared to going into hospital is that there's less waiting around. Um, it tends to be a less stressful environment for their recovery. Also, they tend to sleep better as it's less noisy. And also, there's a reduced risk of infection. If we felt it was safe for somebody to stay at home, we would always try and um, keep them at home. But obviously, we need to take their wishes into consideration as well. If you tell me exactly what I've got to do... Yeah. OK. Then I'll do it. Yeah. I'll ask the respiratory nurses to come and visit you tomorrow. Yes. OK? But if you have any problems, call the surgery as well. OK. Yeah? Cos we can What help. such as problems? Well, look, if your breathing's getting worse, yeah. or you can't manage at home... Yeah, well, I would tell you. Yeah? Then. OK. Thanks a lot. All right. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thanks very much. I'm seeing you next week, aren't it I? It was raining, wasn't I? Okay, Looks like it's stopped on. now. I think it's all right. Thanks, Doctor. All right. Bye. By the way. <laughs> what may be worth doing, given your history, is getting you an early scan in the pregnancy. Mm. Yeah, so that would be good. check everything's going OK. Yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about, and then just if there's anything that I can do. Obviously, I'm willing to just try... I've stopped <laughs> running, which probably... I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. I'm... You know, I'm really trying to do everything I can so mm. at least then I can say to myself mm -hmm. with nothing I've done. Yeah, and I think that's normal to do that and I think that's probably an appropriate thing to do. There isn't any evidence that running in any way will affect no. or doing sport will affect it, but human nature being what it is, it's not... If, if that's a decision you made, that's, that's fine to do yeah. that. Yeah. To be honest, whether it makes it better or worse, it's mostly out of your control because it's more to do with the DNA of the, the embryo that's forming rather than anything that you are... You were yeah. doing. I think it's really, really hard when you have such a difficult year. 
I think the best thing we could probably do if I got your dates now and try and get you a scan about seven weeks so we can see and there's an early pregnancy unit at St yeah. George's. So what will they be able to see at this early stage? And hopefully at seven weeks you should be able to see a heartbeat, you should be able to see the gestational sac in the womb and if they can't what they would do is then bring you back the following week so they could scan you again. Okay. All right. Cool. Okay. All right. Um, do you want me to dispose of this? Yeah. yeah. No, no, I don't really want to carry really. it. <laughs> Lovely. Okay, well... I hope it all goes well next week. Yes, okay. I'll let you know. Good. You all right. Bye. I'm not too sure. Bear with me a moment. Is ear syringing messy? Messy? Can they get messy, yeah. No, they won't get messy. No, it won't get messy, no. All right, then. OK. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> So have you had your ear syringe before? No. Irrigated or anything, no? It's not a painful procedure, it's just feels a bit weird, warm water in your ear. OK. Yeah. Just come and take a seat over here. Thanks. So if it does start to hurt, cos it's not supposed to, then let me know when I'll stop and put this here. Don't get wet. Hold this cup under your ear like that for me. Look straight ahead. Keep your head okay. just like that. Yeah. Like, like that, straight ahead. Yeah, cool. You ready? Yeah. Oh, wow. It was alright, actually. Whoa. There it is. <laughs> quite, little, quite little lumps come oh out. Oh my day. What? What was it? <laughs> that, that sounds bizarre. How does it feel? I can mean, hear you, you sound like you're shouting. <laughs> Oh Have a look in the cup, if you God. want. <laughs> Does it feel good, then? It feels amazing. There you go. Let me have a look in quick. Oh, my God. That's the best reaction I've had. <laughs> I'm going to listen to some music tonight. Yeah, enjoy. All right, let me just move you around here just a little bit. That's it, and then out. All right. And just look straight. Yeah. I'm going to begin, yeah? Yeah. There we go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we. That was even bigger. Seriously. Mm, have a look. Oh in. my goodness. <laughs> oh my god. What? The hearing? Oh my goodness. It's weird, isn't it? Let me have a look. That is amazing. <laughs> Let me just look. You don't value your hearing, your hearing until it, it gets taken away from you, like from the guts or something. You see the big lumps in there? I see. Mm. It feels weird that I can hear myself inside. Right, there you go, two crystal clear ears. Oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm meant to feel like this, I can hear yeah, myself inside. Because you're not used to having their normal hearing. It's been, they've been blocked up God knows how long. Yeah. So this is how sound should usually be. Okay. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> there you go, happy? Yeah, I'm more than happy. Good. There you go. All right? Take care. If ever you need it done, again, you know what to do. Take care. All right, thank you, Barbara. Yeah. Bye. Nice to see you. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. No Lovely problem. To see you. That's OK. Thank you. OK, I love you. Thanks for seeing me. No problem. Yeah, thank you. Take care.